Before I start, I just want to tell about and talk about what this is not about, because I have a lot of people go around and say that Armin says Muslims are worse than Nazis, and I was like, "Where the? F can I swear?" Okay. Yes, you I'll can swear. Yes, you okay. can okay. swear. You so what? Oh no, Buhraz is saying no, so I'm going to try not to swear. Um, I don't know where where did I say that? Like I never said that. In fact, one of the main reasons why I think Islam is worse than Nazism is because of its capacity to take advantage of such high number of good people to be able to spread this ideology, right? I never suggested that Muslims are worse than Nazis. Um, it's, I said Islam is worse than Nazism. And I'm hoping people here know how major difference of a claim that is. Because some people don't seem to even understand that. That what saying Islam is worse than Nazism is not at all comparable to saying why Muslims are worse than Nazis. Um, most Muslims are great people. Most Muslims are better than Islam. Um, most, just like most Christians are better than Christianity. If you go ask Christians, do you think it's okay for women to have a position of authority? Do you think it's okay for women to uh, teach? Um, the vast majority of Christians out there would be like, of course, what the hell are you talking about? Why, why is that even a question? Um, but if you look at the Bible, the Bible clearly makes it very, very clear that women are not supposed to have a position of authority and women are not supposed to teach. Women should remain silent and accept the authority of men. Uh, this is a very clear position of the Bible. Most Christians don't agree with that. Most Christians don't admit that they disagree with the Bible. But hey, because that most Christians have higher moral standards than the Bible, which is what I assume we agree that is the position of Christianity. Uh, so if we define Islam as what the Quran teaches, I mean, that is, I don't know how else. Again, some people say like, why do, you, why do you say what Islam is, Armin? I will ask Muslims what Islam is. Well, if you ask what Muslim, if you ask Muslims what Islam is, no, um, I'm, I challenge you to find a Muslim that would disagree with the fact that the position of Islam is what the Quran teaches. Okay, so Islam is not just the Quran. Obviously, it's also the Hadiths, and it's also the Isna and many other things. Uh, there are some disagreements over that. Um, again, there are some parts of that that it, there is no disagreement over that, but we could make it just as simple as we can. The position of Islam is the Quran. Like the other one, I know that most of the Islamic rules and you know, comes from the Hadith, but to make this very simple and easy for me to you know, make it simple and easy to defend my position, we're going to go with the book that is unanimously ac accepted as the position of Islam by almost every Muslim. Like, I haven't met a Muslim that would disagree with that. But if you find that a Muslim that disagrees with that, you have found a, a nominal. Um, so even if you ask Muslims, they agree. But the point, the, the truth is that most Muslims have never read the Quran, uh, let alone the Hadith. But they agree that the Islam, that the Quran is the word of God and the position of Islam. And if you just hold Islam responsible for the Quran and what it teaches, um, it becomes much more dangerous and problematic than Nazism. And if you add the Hadith to that, which is most of the Islamic rules, then, then my position will become much easier to defend even if you add that as well. Um, so, so um, yeah, so Islam. Um, I don't, so again, the definition of Islam for me is believing in Allah is the belief that Allah is God and Muhammad is his prophet. Again, I could say last prophet, but I'm trying to be as inclusive as I possibly can be. So I'm just saying prophet instead of last prophet. And that the Quran is the direct word of God. This is a very inclusive one, it's so inclusive that even many Muslims would disagree with that. Many Muslims would consider people non, not Muslim, but I'm trying to come up with the most 
inclusive definition of Islam, right? Uh, and just by this, basically, you're endorsing the Quran as a book that is source of authority. Um, so that's my definition of Islam. What's the definition of worse? Definition of worse is more harmful, right? Higher number of victims, higher number of causing misery and problems uh, for you know the, the highest number of people will make something worse, right? And by by di by that definition, it's e really easy to show how Islam is worse than Nazism. Um, what the major victims of the major victim of Islam is Muslims themselves. If you actually consider all the, you know, so, and if you want to count the victims and the people who have been affected by Islam, if you want to add total number of that, you have to also consider the entire history of Islam, right? Um, if, for example, if you want to count the number of vic the victims of Nazism, you have to acknowledge that Nazism didn't really get it got a chance to remain in power for that long so what i would admit is that if nazism was if we had nazi governments for as long as we had islamic theocracy then nazism would have been a much greater source of problem than islam okay but the fact that nazism didn't manage to survive then that long again people are like well Armin, what are you talking about we still have nazis around yeah but how many nazi regimes do we have right now how many nazi regimes do we have do, does anybody have a count last time i checked it was zero right but how many islamic theocracies do we have it's more than zero the fact that nazis uh, didn't get a chance to remain in power for that long is part of Nazism. It is the weakness of Nazism. Nazism is self-destructive. Islam is a much more powerful meme that spreads faster and manages to stay in power for longer. And just by being able to do that, it will have a much higher number of victims. Even if while it's in power, right? If you if you compare Nazism of one government, one Nazi regime in power, number of victims per year, per one theo Islamic theocracy, the number of victims per year, then Nazism would win. But the fact that we have more Islamic theocracy and the fact that we have much more years of Islamic theocracy makes the victims of Islamic theocracy and Islam as a whole much higher. Um, but why can Islam spread faster and why is it more effective than Nazism? Why is it a more dangerous virus? If you, if you consider like two viruses, uh, one of them, let's say, has a higher fatality rate, right? Let's say virus A has a higher fatality rate, but the virus, virus A, but virus B has a lower fatality rate, but it's more viral, has a higher infection rate. Um, it could be argued that the virus B is much more dangerous. So the virus of Islam has a higher has a higher infection rate and it goes more it goes viral easier, even though the fatality rate of it is lower than the Nazi virus. So that's why it makes it a more dangerous virus. The, the, there are many reasons why it's a more effective virus. First of all, um, it doesn't have race as a limitation. Um, the Nazi ideology is basically limited itself that nobody can con convert to the Aryan race. Um, you know, so the Islamic ideology is as tribal as the Nazi ideology, but it makes it easy for you to sw switch sides and become part of the in-group rather than the out-group. And that's why it becomes a global ideology rather than limited to a certain group of people. And that's why it could have a much higher problem. Uh, the Islamic ideology has a, does a much better job at marketing. Again, I know before we started recording, I was mentioning that the good parts of this, the small good messages in a bad metho methodology um, is, makes that ideology more dangerous. For example, in Islam, we have some good teachings, right? We have like, oh, take care of the orphans, take care of poor people, 
uh, give to charity. In Christianity, we have similar, you know, love your neighbor and, you know, fluffy, um, simplistic moral messages that makes people think like, okay, there's a marketing front. It's basically the sugar coating to a poison pill. Um, and you need that sugar coating. You cannot, if you're, if what you're feeding to people tastes like shit, it's really hard to market your ideology, right? Um, and Nazism tastes like shit. Uh, it doesn't have the sugar coating required to be able to sell it the, the way that Christianity and Islam have. Like what I say to people, like imagine if Hitler had some pictures. I'm glad that he does it, right? I, imagine if Nazis did all the crimes that they committed. Like we're trying to, but an alternative version of history where they killed six million Jews. I don't know how many million of homosexuals, gypsies, and um, handicapped people. Uh, never ignore them. I think it was two million because people seem to forget them. Um, but he did. Nazis did all of those things. Uh, plus, Hitler had a few pictures of feeding some orphans. Okay, that alternative history would make Nazism a more dangerous ideology. Then I'm so glad that you know if you look at if you actually follow Nazis, they really. The, re the few things that Hitler has, they really hang on to those. Oh, he was, he loved animals and he loved his children. Like, oh, so they also mentioned that Germany's economy prospered for a few years after Nazis came into power, ignoring the fact that going to war with every fucking nation on, on the planet except Italy eventually destroyed their economy. Uh, but those few things that they have, they hang on to it because that's all they have as to show like maybe Nazis were not that bad. So they don't have much to go by. But imagine if they did. Imagine if Hitler kept on hanging out with the poor. He kept on feeding little children that were like in slums. Uh, and he had all those pictures. People, it, people are stupid. People would, that would be an effect even if he still killed a whole bunch of Jews and all the handicap and all the other things that he did. Uh, people that they would be able to sell Nazism and a lot more if he did that. So I'm so happy that he didn't do those things. But again, Islam has those things. Islam has those fluffy rainbow and butterfly, look at us, we're so nice messages that makes the ideology a lot more dangerous. Again, these are um, ideas that doesn't provide any value. Muslims are, when Muslims good, do good things, um, it's mostly because they're good people. It has nothing to do with them following the religion. Um, and because, I mean, these ideas do not come from Islam or Christianity. Um, not murdering people, not, uh, I was going to say not raping people, but then I remember that Christianity and Islam don't actually have anything against rape. Um, not, not stealing. Um, you know, these are ideas that were always there. And in fact, if you look at the way morality and ethics was discussed by philosophers, um, by Greek philosopher, many, many, many years before the Bible or uh, the Quran, um, we see that humans were capable of discussing morality in much, much more complicated and nuanced ways that the, that the simplistic um, ideas that the Quran or the Bible tried to claim credit for. Uh, this is what Islam and Christianity do very effective. They try to take credit for the goodness of people. Um, they, the, the good Muslims and the good Christians that use the Muslim and the Christian label are, are unknowingly giving a, a legitimacy to a, a very dangerous ideology. Um, even if they are not following the book themselves, if even if, I mean, if, I mean, if, if Muslims were actually following the Quran, um, if all Muslims today start following the Quran, word by word, we wouldn't, I think it would be the end of civilization within a week. If most Christians follow Christianity to the word today, we would have a similar, maybe two weeks, maybe not one week. With Islam, within one week, it would be the end of civilization. By Christianity, by two weeks, it would be the end of civilization. Thankfully, with people just like just like most people, I think their humanity and their kindness is most of the time defeating the ideas that is coming from Islam or Christianity. And that's actually the benefit of Islam, because Islam itself will eventually self-destruct, just like Nazism self-destructed. 
um, if if all Muslims or Christian uh, Christians follow their religion. Uh, the problem is that those ideas, even if Muslims and Christians have not read those ideas or do not follow those ideas, when they use the label, they're giving gi they're giving it a legitimacy and they're giving it authority for people with bad intentions to be able to use it whenever they need to, uh, and they use it in very destructive ways. B but um, they can do that because of the numbers they have uh, behind them to show that this is a legitimate source of authority, right? Um, you know, for example, Nazis today don't have that. Um, but again, everything that is a problem with like a book like Mein Kampf, you would be able to find that in Islamic teachings that and 10 times more. Like I challenge you to tell me what is within the ideology of Nazism other than it's racism because to be fair to Islam, there is no racism, there is no direct racism in Islam, but the, there is the tribalism, right? So there is the, super, the sense of superiority, right? Every, other than direct racism, there is nothing within that ideology that you can't find in Islam. And actually the tribalism, I, I, I was argue that the tribalism that exists within Islam is the more dangerous form of tribalism. <laughs>